you know, so that parts place in Nepal didn't work out. But I did get this catalog from Opus Dark's Technology Emporium. Yes, they are the dealers of the finest, rare, new, used, and unidentifiable technologies in New Swabia. Let's see, they've been around since uh, 1948. They're open Monday through Friday. Roadside available. Closed in winter. Ooh. Uh, telephone, Swabia, 4242. Well, you know... I'm really excited about the catalog, and I'm hoping they have one of these. This is a trans hyperneutron resonance adjuster with binary effector. It's essentially an on-off switch, but as you can see, it's not on-offing very well. So I'm going to take a look at the catalog later. But in the meantime, let's talk beer with Michael Hockley Pierce of Litherman's Limited. Hi, kids. Hey, MHP. Good to be here. Yeah. So let me tell you. Litherman's Limited is really making a splash in the Concord beer scene. So, uh, tell us a little bit about what's going on. We try not to splash too much because that means we spilled some beer. Oh, well, you know. Well, we recently uh, expanded our tasting room so we now can hold mm -hmm. almost 80 people. Um, it's a comfortable space with some high seating on one side, low, comfortable, chill seating on the other side. Mm -hmm. We've got uh, yeah. six, eight, ten beers on tap depending on the day. And um, we're actually going to be open 12 to 7 on Wednesday before Thanksgiving and 12 to 7 on Black Friday as well to take care of all your retail and in-law needs. Yes, there'll probably be some thirsty people as far as that goes. <laughs> so, well, we do have a beer to sample. That's crazy. How did that happen? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but it's going to be the little peach of my heart. The little peach of my heart. Thank so, you, Mike Freeman, mm -hmm, for yes. the name. So, uh, MHP, look, while I pour it, you know, walk us through this beer a little bit, you know, what it is, the evolution of it. So this is a kettle sour. Um, there's a couple of different ways you can make sour beers. You can do souring post-fermentation, where it's a secondary fermentation, and that's usually done in wood or steel or sometimes stone or concrete, and that takes a year, years. Or you can kettle sour, where you... Mix the grains in the water, you run the liquid off, and you sour it in the kettle with souring bacteria before you boil it and then process it like regular beer. So that's what we've done here. We gave it a couple of days uh, with a little bit of heat and carbon dioxide with mm -hmm. uh, a very special blend of lactobacillus we get from our friends over at Omega Yeast Labs. And um, when it hit the right pH, we turn the heat on, we boil it, and we process it like a regular beer. And we have natural organic peach puree that we get from a top secret Dave. Source. Dave's not here right now. Dave's Dave. not here right now. We get peaches from Dave, and it's uh, just Dave. ridiculously peach forward. The aroma, which is what we're going to hit first. So, are these locally sourced peaches then? They're not. Um, okay. They're from, I believe, they might be from Massachusetts. Oh, we, that, we get that's them, local enough. We get them from Massachusetts, yeah. but they're they're bacteriologically stable. Mm -hmm. We know what the sugar content is, so we know exactly what's in them spec wise. One of the things that I'm finding, uh, particularly, you know, at Burt's Bitter Beers, is that we have a lot of people asking for sours. I think sours are going to be one of the more emerging styles uh, in the future. What do you think about that? Definitely. Mm -hmm. I, I see as people make more approachable sours that aren't as tart as traditional Berliner mm -hmm. Weisses or barrel-aged sours, that they're going to be accessible to more people, kind of. As we saw with IPAs becoming less bitter and becoming more approachable, I think that's sort of what's happening with sours, is they're becoming more approachable and more broad. Now, now you talked about uh, you know, lactobacillus you know, and, and, and making kettle sours. Now, uh, with botanomyces, you can also make sours, but those also take a very long time. And the kettle sours can, you know, uh, you know, get into the bottle, into the get, uh, glass a bit quicker than uh, uh, the one that's strictly a botanomyces. I made a Britannomyces peach that took two years right. you know, of, uh, of fermentation before it was even close to being ready. And that's not unusual. This actually just adds uh, about three days to the process, so it's just about two weeks, a little over two weeks. Oh, well, let's give it a try. All right. Okay, tell us about the aroma. It's going to be peaches, right? Like when you bite into the peach and get to the pit, that darkest, reddest part oh of the peach. Oh my gosh, it's almost fuzzy. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And that's all, that's all natural organic peaches. Mm -hmm. Very nice. It's um, it's close to clear. It's got a little solid in it because it's got so much fruit. Well, yeah, um, a little bit of pretty, fruit haze, pretty but it's close okay. to clear. Nice color to it. Good head retention. Moderate legs going on. Thank you. I just shaved. Mm, yes, yes. And it is just so peachy tart. Mm. It, the thing about 
fruit is it doesn't taste like fruit unless it's got a good tartness behind it. So you can make a fruit sweet beer without tartness and it doesn't mm -hmm. taste fruity. But once you introduce a serious level of sourness, it just really reminds you more of a fruit. And this just reminds me of a peach. So um, you've heard about the fifth flavor since umami. I asked you not to call me that. <laughs> not yo mama, oh, right. umami. No umami <laughs> jokes, no umami <laughs> jokes. It was in my rider. So, you know, that's something I'm trying to work into. Where does umami fit into the flavor profile uh, of this beer? But uh, that's more of a savory thing. But this is very nice, very tart. Uh, certainly the peach comes through very oh, nicely. Yeah. You know, a little bit of a dry finish to it. Super dry. There's a, like no sugar left. Goes in clean with this. So what's the ABV on this? Uh, 6%. 6%. 6%. 6 so, you know, overall, this is just a very nice kettle sour. I think it's certainly going to be a great uh, uh, after dinner uh, mm. kind of beverage, particularly uh, on the Thanksgiving table. And this is something that somebody who's mm -hmm. not a beer drinker Christmas. per se could like, because yeah. it's almost more like a like a champagne. Well, it's you know, one of those. If you put it in a flute and give it to someone that said, that said they don't like beer, they'd be looking at you going, yeah. what did you do? But it's <laughs> essentially, it's a very traditional style. Berliner Weisses were a little lower in alcohol. Mm -hmm. They would often give you the syrup of whatever was regionally, you know, in that in that brewery, popular Woodruff or... Um, what was the other one that we got off of? Mitschus, when you get your Berliner Weiss. Mm -hmm. uh, elderberry? Yes. And you'd mix it in yourself at the bar. We'd just save you the trouble and put it in the glass. That's very nice, very nice. So, Leatherman's Limited. So tell us, you know, what's your address? We're at 126 Hall Street, Unit B in Concord. That's right in between exits 12 and 13. Uh, we just added to our tasting room, so we have over 3,000 square feet overall now, over 1,000 square feet of hospitality space. Mm -hmm. uh, we're available for uh, for events. If you want to hold a networking event there or a party or something like that, let us know. Um, you can always Weddings, bring a group bar in. Weddings, bar mitzvahs, Oh, yeah, riffs. absolutely. Spaceballs, too, to so you more money. There you go, there you go. Um, it's a cool place to hang out. It's all about the music. We don't have any television sets. We don't even have flat screens that show our menu. It's all on chalkboards. Um and it's a, it's a cool place to hang out. So come and check us out. We are open um, generally Thursdays and Fridays 4 to 7, Saturdays 12 to 5. But the day before and after Thanksgiving, we will be open from 12 to 7 just to make sure that everyone has a chance to get in. And we'll have not only 24 cases or so of this beer available launching. We also saved three cases of our Quadra Calabasia from this mm -hmm. year. Uh, so there's 33 bottles of that available. Oh, if you want to see what that bottle Whoa. looks like, there's a quad of Calabasia. This one is not long Thanksgiving Day. Trust me on that. And that's a 10.5% Belgian quad made with Concord grown pumpkins. Um, and we may have another surprise. We're, we're going to kind of keep You're it under our hats. You're just full of surprises, but, aren't you? Um, it's quite likely there will be another beer in cans, brewery only, about 12 cases available on Wednesday. And they'll probably go fast. We're waiting on labels. Yep. And we've got one more beer here that we're going to talk about real quickly. And I don't even have any of that. Bow Wow Yippee Yo IPA. There's only one place it's you can get it taste. right now, and that's at Burt's Better Beers. Absolutely the last case of Wonka mm -hmm. Bars. 200, 300, 5,000. Your Majesty. <laughs> that was just for all the Wonka nerds out there. Oh, God. Look, so... Anyway, if you want to find out more about uh, the New Hampshire beer scene, uh, get the video Brew Hampshire by Slate Roof Films. You'll get to hear more of MHP's story, first beer, beer stories, and uh, other beer personalities. You know, I already did that bit. I'll cut it out. Now what? Have you been to Antarctica? You know, it's funny because... Um, we got... Isn't that where the penguins are from? Just the other day, I was in uh, Schwab, you know, hanging out with the yeah. penguins, Schwabbing. Yes, yeah, Schwabbing no, about. I actually don't. I don't frequent Schwab. Antarctica. Your penguin has tape on his back. Yeah, is that an Antarctica thing? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Keeps him warm.